The British land on Ile d'Orléans, facing Quebec, and prepare to launch their attack. But it is Quebec that strikes first. Eighty ships and rafts have been chained together and loaded with explosives. Then they are released in the current to float downriver and blow up the anchored British fleet. bears down on the invaders. It becomes the night John Knox will never forget. Nothing could be more formidable than these infernal engines were on their first appearance. They were certainly the grandest fireworks that could possibly be conceived. Awful. Yet beautiful. Blaze of floating fires. The bursting of the grenades. The crackling of other combustibles, all of which reverberated in the air in the adjacent woods. It afforded a scene, I think, infinitely superior to any adequate description. But the ships have exploded too soon. The British fleet is spared. A citizen watches the fireboats burn uselessly. The project was beautiful, but badly executed. The English who at first were dismayed cried hurrah and mocked our operations. Across the river at La Vie, the British have entrenched their cannons. The city is waiting. It is the night of Thursday, July 12th. Francois Joseph de Vienne is watching from his warehouse. At precisely nine o'clock in the evening, the enemy sent a rocket from the heights of the Pointe de Livy. At noon, a bomb fell on the widow Morin's house, set it on fire, and burned it to the ground, as well as the houses of the widow Chenvert, of Monsieur Cardenas, of Monsieur Dessier, of Madame Boisevert. One night, 50 of the finest houses in the lower town were destroyed. During this uh, dreadful conflagration, we could offer nothing but tears and prayers at the foot of the altar during such moments as could be snatched away from tending to the wounded.
Fire and bombardment terrorized the whole town. The women and children in great numbers near the citadel were continually in tears, wailing and praying. They huddled together and said the rosary. The siege spreads terror and provokes rage. A soldier of the Lassar regiment was killed by a bomb. The English were angry that our men worked on our batteries during the troops. It seems they want to impose their laws on us already. The British are bombarding a nearly deserted city. But for the few civilians left, there's a greater danger than cannonballs. Famine threatened to reduce us to the last extremity. Upwards of 600 persons from our house and vicinity partaking of our small means of subsistence. The enemy, informed of our destitute condition, was satisfied with battering at our walls. Hopeless of trying to vanquish us, except through starvation. The British siege of Quebec lasts nine weeks. Every morning, every afternoon, every night, the bombs fall. Almost 20,000 cannonballs have crushed the city. And still Quebec will not surrender. 